All bikes need a little bit of maintenance to keep riding their best and e-bikes are no different. Today I'm going to show you everything you need to know to do all of this maintenance yourself. Here's a full list of tools and supplies to keep everything working tip top on your bike. Let's start with the pedals. It's recommended to grease the threads at least once a year to keep the pedals from creaking. Also if your pedals start doing this, it's time to replace them. All pedals have a right side with regular threading that you tighten clockwise and left side with reverse threading that you tighten counterclockwise. Typically a 15 millimeter open wrench is used for installation and the tightening torque is generally between 25 and 30 newton meters. The left pedal marked with an L and closer to the crank should be loosened clockwise and tightened counterclockwise. The right side pedal marked with an R and closer to the chain ring should be tightened clockwise and loosened counterclockwise. Maintenance of the chain ring and cranks. Regular cleaning of an e-bike's chain ring with a cloth to remove all the grime is crucial. Cleaning helps protect the chain and chain ring extending their lifespan. If you see any damage such as a bent or broken tooth on the chain ring, it's time to replace it. Any signs of them coming loose or unusual noises coming from the cranks and chain ring might mean loose screws or deformed square holes. And if you see those, you should be replacing the cranks ASAP. Removing the cranks and chain ring. Use an 8mm hex wrench to unscrew the chainring fixing crew counterclockwise. Insert the crank puller head into the crank's thread and lock it. Grip the crank and using an adjustable wrench, turn the crank puller handle clockwise. Remove the chain from the chainring and remove the crank. Repeat the process to remove the crank on the other side. Take care not to damage the threads of the crank and chainring during disassembly. Reinstalling the cranks back onto the bike. Hang the chainring onto the bottom bracket and use an 8mm hex wrench to tighten the chainring screw. Ensure that the chainring and left crank are in opposite alignment when installing the cranks. The recommended torque for tightening the cranks is 35 to 45 newton meters. Let's talk about the bottom bracket. If you start hearing unusual noises or start feeling any resistance when spinning the bottom bracket, or even notice any play in the bearings, it's time to replace it, removing the bottom bracket. Note that the threads on the left and right side of the bottom bracket are opposite. The left side has a standard clockwise thread, so the bottom bracket should be loosened counterclockwise. And the right side has a reverse counterclockwise thread, so it should be loosened clockwise. Use a 20 spline bottom bracket tool and ratchet wrench to loosen the left cup of the bottom bracket, but do not fully remove it quite yet. Rotate the handle clockwise to loosen the right cup and then remove the whole thing off the bike. Reinstalling the bottom bracket. Distinguish between left and right. Typically, the right side has a fixed thread and the left side has a removable thread. I recommend applying a little bit of bike grease to the threads at the bottom bracket junction for smoother operation, but this is optional. Begin by installing the right side bottom bracket, rotating counterclockwise until snug. Initially, just secure it without over tightening. Then install the left cup. Use the 20 spline tool to tighten the right side thread then secure the left side thread. Alternate between left and right side threads until there's no gaps between the tool and the threads. The torque for locking the bottom bracket is 45 to 60 newton meters. Let's talk about the all important bike chain. Regular bike chain maintenance includes cleaning and lubricating the chain. Over time, the chain accumulates dust and debris. This accelerates the wear and decreases your shifting efficiency. So how often should you maintain the chain? Riding in wet and muddy environments requires more frequent maintenance than when you're only riding on dry surfaces. In fair weather conditions, riding on ordinary roads, it's recommended to clean and lubricate your chain every 250 kilometers. For off-road riding, you should increase that to every 100 kilometers. After riding in really muddy conditions, you should clean and lubricate your chain right away. And in rainy weather, just a simple clean and lubrication will prevent rust. Cleaning the chain. A quick wipe involves rubbing the surface of the chain with a dry cloth dampened with a mild neutral cleaner. For even better results, use a chain cleaning device along with a chain cleaning solution. Attach the chain cleaning device to the chain and close the cover. Pour the cleaning solution into the device and rotate the crank to clean the chain. Once that's all done, just rinse the chain with water and dry it as best you can. Chain lubrication should involve the use of dedicated chain lubes. Dry lube for dry weather and wet lube for wet and muddy terrain. During the lubrication process, focus on applying lube to the bearing areas responsible for the chain's movement. Apply a thin and even layer to all the other parts of the chain to prevent rusting. And please avoid over lubricating the chain. Excess lube will just attract more dust and wear out your chain faster. 
Apply the chain lube lightly to the rollers of the chain under the rear fork. Rotate the crank counterclockwise and ensure all rollers have been lubricated. You can use a chain maintenance brush or your hand to evenly spread the chain lube all over the surface of the chain. Finally, use a dry cloth to wipe off all the excess chain lube, ensuring an even application on the chain. And please avoid getting any of that chain lube on your discs. If you get any chain lube on the disc by accident, you can wash it out with non-corrosive oil cleaner and then wash it with clean water. If you get chain lube onto the brake pads though, they'll need to be replaced. So when is it a good time to replace the chain? The best way to know your chain needs replacing is by using one of these. This is a chain wear measurement gauge. One end of the gauge is marked with a 1.0. This indicates that the chain elongates by one millimeter for every 11 links. If you insert the 1.0 side and it fits, it means that the chain is completely worn and must be replaced to prevent any further wear to the freewheel and chainring. The other side is marked with a 0.75, signifying a 0.75 millimeter elongation for every 11 links. If you use the 0.75 side and it fits, it indicates that the chain has worn quite a bit and replacement is definitely recommended ASAP. If none of the sides fit like mine here, the chain can continue to be used normally. Removing the chain. Using a chain tool, place the chain into the holder and gently rotate the fixing screw to secure the position of the pin against the chain link. Rotate the handle, moving the tool pin to contact the chain pin and make sure that both of these pins align with the center of the chain link. Continue turning the handle, pressing the pin out of the first outer link. Pause the pin at the second outer link if you're reusing the chain. Retract the chain tool pin, remove the chain from the tool, and then spread the links open like so. Pro tip, when removing your chain, take your time as to not scratch your bike. Installing the chain. Begin by cutting the new chain to the appropriate length. Just copy the one that came off the bike. Make sure your derailleur is still set to the smallest cog. Pass the chain through the chain ring, around the rear sprocket, and hang it on the smallest rear cog. When mounting the chain from under the rear dropout, ensure the left chain end is in the inner plate and the right chain end is in the outer plate. Guide the chain around the rear derailleur's jockey wheels from the inside to the derailleur cage. It should go inside the derailleur cage like so. Pull the chain end closer, insert the connecting pin, and use the chain tool to slowly push the pin back in. Stop when you feel a decrease in resistance indicating that the pin is in place. Then you just wiggle the chain back and forth to make sure it's not kinked. Chain Jam Solutions. If the chain does not smoothly pass between the derailleur pulley and the freewheel creating a tight spot known as a chain jam, the chain might be dry or it might be a tight link. To remove the chain jam, apply force to the chain and gently manipulate it laterally. This helps free up tight sections for a smooth rotation. How to remove your freewheel. First, refer to the motor core replacement to remove the rear wheel off the bike. Then use a freewheel removal tool to disassemble the freewheel. Use an adjustable wrench along with the freewheel removal tool to loosen the freewheel by turning it counterclockwise and then remove it. Installing the freewheel. Use an adjustable wrench along with the freewheel removal tool to install the freewheel by turning it clockwise and tightening it. Then refer to the motor core replacement video to reinstall the rear wheel back onto the bike. Removing a cassette. First, remove the rear wheel off the bike, then use the 12 spline freewheel removal tool. Attach it to the cassette cover, ensuring that the socket fits into the key slot of the locking ring. Stand the wheel vertically. Loop the chain around the cassette using the freewheel installation and removal tool. Tighten it clockwise, aligning the tool at an angle that facilitates applying force. The purpose of the freewheel installation and removal tool is to prevent the cassette and hub from rotating when loosening the cassette cover. Apply counterclockwise force with the right hand to loosen the cassette lock ring. You may hear a clicking sound as the cassette cover loosens and that's normal. Remove the 12 spline freewheel installation and removal tool. Rotate the cassette cover counterclockwise until it separates from the hub. And then you can take the cassette off the hub. Installing a cassette. Only the 12 spline freewheel installation and removal tool and a wrench are needed for the installation of the cassette. First, clean any debris from the hub and apply a thin layer of grease or anti-seize compound to the external surface of the hub to prevent oxidization or corrosion. Aligning everything is crucial here. Take a look at the hub and cassette, identifying the narrowest protruding key on the hub and the narrowest groove on the cassette. Align them both together and insert the cassette. Please ensure proper alignment. If the key and groove don't match, it just won't fit. Insert the cassette onto the hub and then insert the smaller cogs onto the cassette as well following the key and the grooves. Apply a little bit of grease to the threads of the cassette lock ring. 
Then hand tighten the cassette lock ring onto the hub. Once everything is lined up, insert the 12 spline freewheel install and removal tool into the key slot of the cassette chain ring. Using a wrench, rotate clockwise to fully tighten the lock ring. You may also hear a clicking noise when tightening here, and that's normal. The cassette lock ring must be torqued to a recommended 40 newton meters. Maintenance and care for the cassette. Use a specialized cleaning brush or a thin, hard tool to remove dirt and debris between the cassette sprockets. After scrubbing, use a dry cloth to wipe away any solvent residue from the cassette and tire surface. Make sure that no cleaning solvent enters the hub's pause bearings while cleaning. When to replace the cassette. The cassette gradually wears during use. Consider replacing it if the chain can't properly engage, or if it's skipping during forceful pedaling. If installing a new chain fixes all that skipping, the cassette may continue to be used. Otherwise, consider immediate replacement. Pro tips, cleaning the cassette will take off all the debris sticking to it, and this will reduce the surface wear. And when lubricating your chain, avoid getting chain lube onto the cassette. Applying lube to the cassette is just gonna make it attract more sand and dust, and it's gonna wear out way faster. Let's talk about the gear shifter and cable. To remove the cable, first adjust the derailleur and chain to the smallest cog. Then use a crosshead screwdriver, hex key, or wrench to loosen the fixing screw on the rear derailleur connected to the gear shift cable. Remove the gear cable off the derailleur, then use a pair of side cutters to clip off the cable end cap. Disassemble the gear shifter by loosening the screw located beneath it. Remove the handlebar grip, then loosen the brake to access and extract the gear shifter. Disassemble the gear cable by following its route, allowing the gear cable to be removed. Installing a gear shifter and cable. Place the gear shifter onto the handlebar and screw in the fixing screw without tightening it completely. Then install the brake lever and handlebar grip, securing the respective screws without fully tightening them. Adjust the gear shifter, brake lever, and handlebar grip to their proper positions, and then tighten the corresponding screws securely. Insert the gear cable into the gear shifter, then into the gear cable housing. Follow the same routing of the cable as when it was removed. Insert the gear shift housing and cable into the rear derailleur. Secure the cable into the fastening screw, tension the cable slightly, then tighten the screw. Trim off the cable and put on a cable end cap. You can crimp it securely using pointed pliers to prevent it from coming loose. In the next video, I'll be showing you everything you need to know about your disc brakes. How to maintain them, align them, and maybe even replace them. See you there.